Thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Go to expressvpn.com slash billium to get three months free. Yeah, this is billium. LCD games are one of my favorite things to collect, not only because I've learned to enjoy watching my Tamagotchi die, but because it's the kind of gameplay experience that really only works with the very specific form factor that these things come in. Scanners lets you collect monsters through scanning barcodes when it wanted to work. Digimon lets you connect and battle, and Cube World let you collect and connect a series of stick figure characters, which created this really fun and really strange digital aquarium. However, I think the most impressive LCD line of toys that I've come across so far is actually Pixel Chicks. Ahem. You're watching TV when there's a party at my place? You can hang with Pixel Chicks and have a pixel day. Pixel Chicks is a line of electronic games released by Mattel starting in 2005. It features a Pixel Chick voiced by Tara Strong who lives inside many of the different Pixel Chicks toys. By interacting with the character, players can reach different stages in the game, which unlocks more clothes, food options, and games to play with your Pixel Chicks singular. The toy could also be interconnected with other Pixel Chicks variants and accessories, so different Chicks could interact with each other. Hey, they're pals. Honestly, the thing that makes Pixel Chicks really cool is the form factor itself. Instead of the characters being on a regular LCD screen, they're on a transparent screen with a real physical miniature set in the background, which really makes you feel like you're looking into this tiny little world. Yeah, I know it was pretty shocking when you found out your rival was the Pokemon champion at the end of Pokemon Red and Blue, but I think the greatest video game twist of all time is the little light in the bedroom turning on when the pixel chick goes to bed. I don't ever want to hear y'all talk about how Skyrim is immersive again. Look at that. That's dope as heck. So let's take a look at these toys because I do that sometimes. The first Pixel Chicks set was released in 2005, the Pixel Chicks House, which retailed for $29.99. It had a few different variants, each with their own character inside. On the front of the house, there's buttons for Pixel Chick interaction. Yes, no, bedtime, food games, and go out. The two buttons on each side also control certain games, and the more you interact with your Pixel Chick, the more options are unlocked for each of these different settings. On both the left and right side of the house, there are connectivity inserts to interconnect multiple Pixel Chicks toys. Once connected, Pixel Chicks could go over to each other's houses and hang out and junk. What are they talking about? If I had to guess, they were talking about how they're gonna subscribe to this channel, comment down below, and like this video. You know, just girly things. I'm a big fan of these miniature sets. The house is divided into a few sections, the kitchen, dining room, and living room. She'll grab food, take it over to the couch, and just hang out. Sick. I'll dress her up in some cute outfit, and she'll be like, look at me, look at me. But the second I ask her to leave the house... No way. What do you want from me? Overall, there are five different levels you can reach, but if you ignore your pixel chick for too long, she'll get angry and walk out on you. I mean, all I did was be awful to her and ignore her needs for an extended period of time. Also, this ghost appeared after she walked out, and in true haunted, ghoul, spooky, ghost, or specter fashion, the video is shaky and really blurry. I I'm sorry. The next major Pixel Chicks release was the Road Trip in Cars. All right, just give me a second. I gotta preserve the collectability while opening it. The road tripping car could connect to the house and pick up other characters to go to the mall or beach. You can change music on the radio, pick different destinations, and roll the windows up and down. The best part about making these videos is having to track down and buy every single AAA battery in the metropolitan area. I'm sorry if people need these batteries to prepare for the Florida hurricane season, but I need them to play with toys. Zoom, zoom. Included in this two pack is the slick clamshell coin purse style love to shop mall, where you can throw it back to middle school and loiter in Hot Topic or go to the Apple store to take photos on Photo Booth on all of the Macs. There were two different varieties of the Love to Shop mall with two stores each. There's this cool flip display which goes up and down depending on which store you want to be in. There's the food court slash boutique, but unfortunately mine is not working well, but I do have the pet store slash salon. So the first thing you have to do is ask the boss for a job. Hello there. Hi, it's nice to meet you. I hear you need a job. Start right now? Absolutely. Are you kidding? You can either work to make money or immediately spend your money at the mall on products. At the salon, you have to give different customers different hairstyles, all while deciding who to serve first. At the pet store, you have to avoid getting the cash register robbed by kicking out this sketchy guy. Probably hanging out at the mall to do some sketchy things like working at Skechers. Then you gotta get someone a fish and catch these fish who are just, you know, fishing all over the place. And then there's a random matching game for giving a customer a black cat. Oh, and you can take a break to watch your little pixel friend chill out. Oh my God, she's ordering a pizza. 
while at work. Y'all, I think I finally figured out who best girl is. And of course, you can check your inventory and money. You can get a pet, new outfits, new hairstyles. But even after working for what felt like 20 minutes, I can't even afford anything at the food court. Not even Pixel Panda Express or Pixel Sabaros. There's something so strangely depressing about a children's toy that teaches such blatant consumerism. Work at the mall to spend money at the mall. But guess what? When I get off work, I'm gonna go hang out with my good friend, the original Pixel Chick. That's right, we're taking this video back to earlier in the video. A nice little Easter egg for all of you longtime fans. They keep trying to talk to each other on the phone, but the dialogue doesn't Line up. So it's just like, absolutely, you're welcome. Hello. It hurts my brain. Pixel Chicks had a ton of different varieties of toys, but unfortunately, the reseller market for these things isn't really there yet. So I was limited to what kind of toys I could buy. There was the two story house, which had a flip screen like the mall, the Pixel Chicks baby. Stinky diaper. Oh. Change it fast. Yeah, babies. They, they, they're farting. And then there was the Pixel Chicks Pets, also called the Secret Life of Pets, but there's no association to the 2016 film of the same name. There's also no association to the 1973 film with a completely different name, Fantastic Planet. Have y'all seen this shit? It's about a bunch of giant blue aliens who keep humans as pets. I am Tiwa, the Pixel Chicks. Is her. My hamster's got a secret. What do you know? But every line of toys has to have the one. The one really expensive toy or playset that's just like the crown jewel out of all of it. The one that kids are dying to have and parents will unfortunately be begged to buy. You know, the Rescue Heroes Tower, Lego Hogwarts Castle, the Dual Disc, the Mighty Moose Bean. Here we have Pixel Chicks Roomies, a six room townhouse which can house up to six Pixel Chicks gals. It retailed for $49.99 and an additional $15.99 for individual Pixel Chicks gals which is how you get more roommates. It's like a Pixel Chicks amiibo. Pixel Chicks for Smash. Don't on my hair. Yeah, I don't know if I like her very much. Anyways, the unit itself features six rooms, a master bedroom and bathroom, two standard bedrooms, a kitchen and bathroom, and the living room and dining room. There's a flip out screen, which can also slide up and down so you can select which room to view. Instead of the buttons being stuck to the front of the device, there's actually a detachable Joy-Con, which has arrows for moving from room to room. Now the queen of the house gets to stay in the master bedroom, but what do you you gotta do to become queen of the house. Well, just like any standard roommate scenario, all of the pixel chicks are eager and competitive when it comes to doing household chores. Yo, I always hated it how my old roommate Jason would like vacuum before I got home from class and that ass would sometimes do my dishes before I had a chance to do them. Oh, Billy, I got this new espresso machine. You can use it anytime you want. F***ing dirtbag. You can play more games and do more chores, and you get points. First to 16 becomes queen of the house. This could also apparently connect to the internet to buy new decorations, and of course, featured more interconnectivity with other Pixel Chicks toys. The last toy I have here is this super S. Static Pixel Chicks TV. Unfortunately, this was only compatible with other Pixel Chicks TVs, and there was actually a Pixel Chicks remote that came with it. It's a dumbed down version of the regular Pixel Chicks toys with a similar leveling system and five channels to play different games. As much as I think the TV design is cool, I do really miss the little set designs. However, the little TV is just absolutely the cutest I've ever seen. So that's a plus. There were other Pixel Chicks toys that I couldn't really track down, but honestly, from just what I've seen, these LCD toys were probably the coolest I've seen so far just because of how unique their form factors are. Coming out in 2005, it was kind of late to the LCD game party, but it definitely learned from all the other ones that came out on the market. It was actually a pretty big success for Mattel. You can make progress, there's things to collect, and having a wide selection of varieties makes buying multiple toys more enticing. These are really cool. I'm happy to have looked at them and I think they're probably one of my favorite collectible pieces I own. But that being said, I'm really stocking up on a lot of nostalgic collectible junk from making these videos. Uh, so despite all that. So anyways, I'm tired. I'm stressed. I'll see you next week. Thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Go to expressvpn.com slash billium to get three months free. Surfing the internet without a VPN is inviting unwelcome nosy people to stick their noses in what you're doing, whether it's your ISP provider or hackers. If you truly want internet privacy, you gotta use ExpressVPN. Hi, it's me, your ISP. Let me sell your data. <laughs> no. A VPN is a virtual private network. It creates a secure tunnel between your device and the 
internet, so it's essentially like an envelope, protecting your info by hiding your IP address, preventing sites and even your ISP from selling your data. ExpressVPN even allows you to reroute your connection to a server in a country of your choice, making geographically restricted content on websites like YouTube, Netflix, or if you're not in America, Hulu accessible. Hey, it's me, Netflix. You can't watch Rick and Morty unless you're in the UK. <laughs> I am in the UK. ExpressVPN only uses premium servers, making them consistently faster than any other VPN providers. I just hit connect in the app and boom. ExpressVPN is the number one rated VPN from publications like TechRadar, Wired, The Verge, and uh, CNET. And with its ease of use and 24 hour customer support, it's really not that hard to see why. So find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by clicking the link in the description below, expressvpn.com slash billium. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video.